Okay guys, so let's go ahead and take our discrete random variable skills and let's apply them to Excel. So go ahead and open up <clears throat> a new Excel sheet and let's start off by building our support. So we've got X and we're still going to work on our dice example. So let me write up just over here real quick our sample space. So it equals zero 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 one two three so this should be if it's not the exact same example it should be pretty dang close to the example that we were working on in our other videos <clears throat> where we have a dice where three of the sides are zeros and then we have a one a two and a three so over here in our support we're going to put down every possible option so we can just do zero one two oops one two and three so this is X, or we also call this the support. <clears throat> Column B, we're going to do the probability of capital X. So X is our, capital X is our discrete random variable. Little x is a specific member of the support. So we're saying, what's the probability of our discrete random variable, or our dice roll, equaling a specific value? So now we can come down here and we can say equals. Well, from over here, we see from our our uh, sample space that we have three possible zeros out of six so we can say three divided by six and then here we can say equals one divided by six and two and three are also one divided by six so we can just drag those down now as you can see like these decimal places are getting kind of ridiculous so I'm just gonna highlight them you can come over to general and there's like usually a number section here that, that you can work with so I'm gonna change these to just in not increase I'm going to de oh, I guess increase there we go I want to just show four decimal places it's usually a good spot to put it at all right so over here I'm going to do the probability of our discrete random variable or our dice roll X is going to be less than or equal to a specific member of the support so this is very similar to um, oh to our cumulative relative frequency before we just give this kind of a new name so over here this is known as our PMF, our probability mass function. And then over here, this is known as our CDF, or our cumulative distribution function. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So the first one is equal to probability of the event X, or the probability of rolling a zero or anything less than. Well, there's nothing less than zero, so we can just hit enter. Next one, we can say equals and we can click on the probability that one's going to happen plus the probability of everything before it. We can just click up here on the CDF. Now we can hit enter. Now we can click on that cell that we just worked on and we can drag it on down. And if we've done it right, this last one will equal one. So let me double click on this, make sure that it's doing it right. Yep, probability of the event that we're on plus everything above it, which is just the cell above in the CDF. And I can hit enter now. So that's really handy. So we've got our probability mass function and our cumulative distribution function. Now we want to also determine things like the expected value of our random variable. So if we were to roll this dice over and over and over and over again on average, so this is also known as, oh dear, give me a second. It's also known as mu. I know u isn't correct, but well, what the heck, I'll go find it. So you can go insert symbol you can go search through your symbols that you commonly use um, well let's see if I can't find it quickly oh I found it where was it it's so close <laughs> here are my Greek symbols and I'm just looking for mute there it is and we're good most of the time though I'm not going to write that I'm just going to put in a U and that is our mean our population mean okay so what does that equal so in order to do it it's actually going to be let me, let me put in another symbol here real soon let's do space equals let me go back to my math symbols. Okay, there they are. Let's see if I can't find it here. If it's not here, I can grab it in the Greek letters. 
That's fine. I'll just scroll down again. Okay, here we go. It is... Uh, where are you? There we go. So it's the sum, so that's our mathematical notation of the sum of an individual outcome multiplied by its associated probability of capital X equals little x. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to kind of break this down a little bit. I'm going to copy that part, and I'm going to paste it up here, because we're going to do it for every single um, member of our support. So we can equals member of the support multiplied by its associated probability, and hit enter. And then we can just drag this guy on down, and let's double click, make sure that our, very, our equation is doing what we want it to, and yep, we're doing member of the support multiplied by its associated probability. That looks good. And in order to do this equation now, so we're just missing the summation part. So in equals sum, we're going to sum up all members of that column. And we have the probability of 1. Okay, so now let's go and do, let's say we want to calculate out the variance of x, which is equal to, let me go grab another symbol. Let's go grab Greek symbols again. Give me a second. And here is our sigma. Sigma squared. OK, and that is going to, so it's very similar to this guy. So I'm going to actually just work off of this. What we do here is we are subtracting. I guess I need that mu too. Give me a second that I don't have to go find it. Okay, and I'm not going to unbold this because I don't need that bolded. Oh, I guess it's just going to be that way. Okay, so we are taking x minus mu, or the distance from the mean squared multiplied by its associated probability. And we've done this one, it's very similar to what we, if you go back and look at notes from maybe week one or week two about the problem, or the um, equation of variance, it's very similar. Okay, so we need to go ahead and do this. So I'm just going to copy this, control C, come up here and control V, and I need to do all of these for every single row or every single member of our support. So let's go ahead and sit equals. And let me go ahead and click on X minus. Okay, and now I need to minus mu. Okay, well, mu is right here. It's our expected value that we just calculated. And we're going to square it. And then we're going to multiply by its associated probability. Okay, great. Go ahead and hit enter. And then let's drag this guy on down. And we see that our equations have propagated. Now, one thing that we want to do is we want to check to make sure our equations are correct after we drag them down. because don't just blindly drag them down. These look right, but I can actually guarantee you that they are wrong. Let's go look at this last one. Look what happened. So our support and our probability of the support, they went down correctly, but check this out. Our mu got drugged down. We And that's not what we want. We want to use the same value of mu for every single calculation. Now, there's a simple way that we can do that. Come on up to this cell, because this one's correct. We want to lock this cell so that it doesn't move when we drag it down. We want to push F4. So remember on a Mac, it's function F4, PC, it's just F4. Or you can just put the dollar signs in. One dollar sign in front of the letter and one dollar sign in front of the number. And then we can go ahead and hit enter. And we can drag that guy down. And once again, let's work on these decimals. Let's make those oop, too big. Let's make them smaller. Four. Now we can get the variance. So this is equal to the sum of our variance column. Sum that guy up. Hit enter. And now I want to know the standard deviation of x, which is equal to just this guy, sigma. So we can take equals the square root. Oh, hold on. Equals square root of the variance of x. All right, so let's do it. Equals sqrt, the square root of our variance, 
and that is our standard deviation. And there we go. So now that we've done this, we're able to determine our from our support and our PMF, we've got our CDF, <clears throat> and we've got two columns that help us calculate the mean and the variance. And this is all from this kind of unique dice of three zeros, a one, a two, and a three. Now suppose we had an issue. Maybe that three, it was actually supposed to be a four. You're like, oh goodness, I gotta do a bunch of work. Well, since we did everything with relationships in Excel, this is actually just seriously one change. We change that four, we hit enter and everything gets updated for us all at once. So anyhow, I hope that this helps a little bit on how to build your PMF, your CDF, and how to calculate the expected value, variance, and standard deviation of general discrete random variables.